Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to Magic Park and to this season's show of Lord Shiva's Bodhisattva. Satsang Theatre by Devadas from Queen Ekaras. First, Devadas will speak from Shiva Sutra and then we will also practice some of the 112 meditation techniques. At the end, there will also be time for questions and answers. Also, this year we'll have Freya from Sweden who will perform a Shiva dance, showing dance as meditation. So, welcome, welcome, welcome. I don't think the microphone is on. <laughs> oh, wow. Pray I pierce in the distance. Oh, my God, it's still here. Pray. <laughs> um. Okay, act one. I see a big ocean. I see a tremendous ocean. And I see mist and rain over the ocean. And on the ocean there is a big whale. Yes, a big whale is swimming. And behind the whale, which is white, it pulls a rope. And there is something big coming after the whale. And it's pulling a big continent over the sea. And when it reaches Himalaya, it dives down. And the whale is actually a rishi from Tibet called Manu, who's been changed harbor and went into a whale. And he's pulling this big land, mass of land, and it crushes into, and the mountain arises, Mount Everest, Kailash, the whole Himalaya stands up, and because of this big crash, and the whale, he, he swims away and disappears, and suddenly he's back in Tibet, as Mana. And so, India has arrived at its place. <laughs> now India is at its place, and the country is feeling very good, Except one thing, there is a king called uh, uh, Bhairata. Bhairata, he has uh, so many followers, uh, happy people, but they come to him and say, we are very sad, we don't have water. We don't have enough water. So, Bhairata, he goes and meditates. He stands on one leg and meditates for Brahma. The, the Lord of the heavens. And Brahma, after one year, he feels pity for Bhagirata. And because his devotion, his compassion, his, his, and his, his sadhana is so strong that he, he uh, talks to him. What do you want, Bhagirata? And Bhagirata says, please answer my prayers. Give us, Lord... Uh, the goddess Ganga, the heavenly stream, give her to the earth and give, let my people have water. Now, Brahma thinks and he says, this is not possible for me because the earth will splash and, and go in thousand pieces. Only Shiva can help you with this business. So Bhagirata, he's, he goes again and does sadhana. He sits meditating. He, put, he pronounces the holy word Aum and his attention is unbroken, like when you pour oil from two vessels and there is a small stream coming and not a gap between. His meditation is so strong that suddenly Shiva appears in the heavens and says, What can I do for you? Oh, uh, my people have no water, so please help me and come down. 
So Shiva feels compassion for him. And Shiva enters from the heaven and he steps down to the earth and he puts his foot on the highest mountain, which also symbolizes the highest consciousness. Shiva puts his foot on Kailash and he comes down to the earth. And there he sits and makes a dwelling. And now Shiva screams, Ganga, Ganga, he calls for her, the heavenly stream from the, from the sky. And she comes down. And when she sees, she, when she sees Shiva sitting there with his terrible dreadlocks, his hair is not combed for years. And she, <laughs> she, she, Ganga, she comes down and she tries to order his hair, you know, and, and by this she gets stuck with her fingers in Shiva's hair. And by this trick Shiva pulls Ganga to the earth. And she starts to flow down from the Kailash, down into uh, Lakshmanjula and down the, uh, the plain all the way. And, and uh, Bhagirata, he goes first and plays the flute and uh, dolphins are jumping and tortoises are swimming in the river. And everybody is happy receiving the river, it comes down. And at Varanasi it makes a big U-turn so that the people in Varanasi always should, shall see the sun rise over the river Ganga and therefore it's called Kashi, the city of light. Now Ganga is at place and the people of India is happy. Okay, we go to act number three. <laughs> In this satsang theater. Now one day Shiva and his beloved sweet Devi wife is sitting by the river and Shiva is meditating. He has his serene smile on his face and he looks very blissful. And Devi, she is also blissful because she is so full of love for Shiva. She is become enlightened only because her heart was so full of love and devotion for Shiva, she immediately went into enlightenment, just through the pure devotion, which is also possible. But still, out of this devotion and compassion for the earth, she puts some crucial questions for Shiva, so that Shiva can explain how to meditate and how his reality is. And now I want you all to help me so can you please stand up a little bit for this supreme exercise? Okay. And if you stand on your feet before you fall asleep, yeah, that's why I let you stand up. Because it's easily fall asleep. <laughs> Especially when I talk. Yeah, okay. So now you stand on your feet, right? So you feel the ground, you feel the ground. And Way a little bit forward over your toes and a little bit backwards and feel, feel the gravity pulling you down. We take again a little bit forward, feel the gravity down and a little bit backward. Feel the, the force that's pulling you up, gravity down, awareness is pulling you up. And then you stop in the middle there, and then there you are. And say after me, Oh Shiva! Oh, oh Shiva! Shiva. Devi is putting this question. She says to Shiva, Oh Shiva! Oh Shiva! What is your reality? What is your reality? What is this wonder filled universe? What is this wonder filled universe? What constitutes sea? What, what constitutes, constitutes seeds? Who centers the universal wheel? Who centers the universal wheel? What is this life? What, what is this life? life? Beyond form. Beyond form. Or pervading forms. Pervading forms. How may we enter it fully? 
how we are to the Lord. Above space and time. Above all space and time. Names and descriptions. Names and descriptions. Please clarify my doubts. Please clarify my doubts. Okay. These were the sweet questions from Devi. Oh, please, now you can sit down again. Thank you. These are the questions. And, and now, Shiva has not reached his enlightenment through devotion. For Shiva, understanding is the only transformation. Understanding and knowledge is the only transformation. So, he answers, <laughs> he answers not by giving any explanation what his reality is. She's asking, oh Shiva, what is your reality? She doesn't answer what Shiva's reality is. He says, he gives her 112 centering techniques so that she herself can experience the reality of Shiva. She gives you one hand, and the first one is like this. You can say uh, after me, O Radiant One, he speaks. O Radiant One. This experience, this experience may dawn, may dawn between two breaths. Between two breaths. When breath goes out, when breath goes out and turns, and turns and goes in and goes in and turns and turns at the turning points at the turning points realize realize so this is a technique where you breathe and you put attention where the breath is turning goes in and out we can do that for i'm not we are not going to ex uh, uh, this you have to ex experiment with maybe three days three months but we can do a little bit, uh, we can sniff on the techniques, some of them, and you will get a glimpse. So we do it one minute. We can try that, okay? Okay, put, um, put your attention on the breath, huh? and breathe out. When the breath goes out and turns at the, and breathes in, at the turning points. for that for half an hour or a uh, uh, long time. You can do this when you're waiting for a bus, you can do it when you're, when you're uh, sitting waiting for your chai to arrive. You can, you can, you can experiment with the 112 centering techniques from Shiva. He gives 112 and the first eight or nine of them are all about breath how to put attention on the breath in different ways. And this has been the foundation of uh, Buddhist meditations, Vipassana meditation, Zen meditation. These are used. And they all come from Shiva. And you go, if you go to Cambodia, you will see in the caves there, Shiva and Buddha as two big statues side by side. Why? Because Shiva is the meditation teacher of Buddha. Shiva, he was many thousand years older 
the tradition from Shiva than Buddha. So Buddha learned from this tradition and made it into Buddhist meditation. Now, the tradition from Shiva traveled very far. And um, it, the, the, the teaching from Shiva went all the way from the east also to, to uh, Greece and to the west by the Silk Road. So, uh, welcome. Uh, one day in Greece, in the Free Academy, the first Free Academy was in Greece with Socrates and Plato, they had satsang up in, at, at Acropolis where they were discussing the, tr the possibility of knowing anything at all. Socrates claimed that he didn't, he knew that he didn't know anything. Ha! <laughs> and that's a special story because uh, one day his disciples went to the oracle in Delphi and asked, who is the wisest man in Greece? And the oracle in Delphi, she went into the cave and made some incense, and she came out and said, Socrates is the wisest man in Greece. And the disciples traveled to, to, to Socrates and said, or, the oracle in Delphi says that you're the wisest man in Greece. And Socrates shake his head and said, it's not possible. I know that I don't know. And they went back to the, the <laughs> oracle in Delphi and said, Socrates says it's not possible because he knows he doesn't know. And the oracle came out again and she said, that's why he's the wisest man. Exactly therefore. <laughs> anyway, at this free academy there was a man called Pythagoras. Pythagoras was known for his mathematics. No? So Pythagoras, he heard one day that in G Egypt, in near the pyramids, there was supposed to be a mystery school. And in this mystery school you could learn the teaching of, of meditation. So Pythagoras, he took uh, his practice things and went on a boat across the Mediterranean. And uh, he traveled by camel. And one day he reached the mysterious school in Egypt. And he knocked on the door. And when the people in the mysterious school opened, the, they opened a little uh, window in the door and looked out and they saw Pythagoras there. And he said, oh, hey, I am the wise, I am the, the most famous mathematician from Greece. I'm Pythagoras. And I come to study your meditations at your, at your mystery school. But immediately they closed the, the door and he was not allowed in. He was not qualified to get in. So he was, Pythagoras got very depressed. And so he, what do you do when you're depressed? And you don't know what to do? He went to a tea house to have a cup of tea. <laughs> and now he comes to this tea house and uh, he sits there, and in a corner, there, there's a funny man sitting. He, he looks like he has a most marvelous blanket around him. And he's sitting there in a corner. And he says to Pythagoras, Pythagoras, now you're a very lucky fellow because I am Mullah Nasruddin <laughs> and I can tell you a story so that you can get the key to the mystery school. I don't know, you hear me without microphone? Huh? Yeah. 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 So I can go on like that. So you listen carefully, Mullah Nasruddin said. Once upon a time, 
there was a king, and the king had a princess, and the princess was the most fairest, beautiful princess in the whole world. And all the prince, uh, young men from nearby came to visit and try to get her from the king. So he, what he did, he locked her up in a tower. He took a, he had a big tower in his castle and he locked her in a room high up and he locked the door. And so no one could, could come to see her. And one day there was a prince came in, come, and the prince, oh, the prince, he came under the tower, he looked up and he played a little bit flute for to get the attention of the princess. And the princess, she looked out through the window in her castle and down there she saw this prince with his white horse parked by a tree. <laughs> and what did she do? She was she immediately fell in love with the prince, of course, and and the prince he couldn't get up there, so he had a very special trick. And now he took out of his pocket a small box, and in the box there was a beetle. And he put the beetle on the wall of the tower, and he put a silk thread around the leg, small, small, thin silk thread. And he put some honey on the horns of the beetle. And the beetle started to climb up the wall. And the princess was looking down through the window. And she saw that coming, a little little animal coming up. And it was climbing, climbing, climbing. And she took the beetle and untied carefully the silk thread and threw him out. And he could fly, the beetle could fly away. And then she pulled the silk thread. And in the silk thread, there was a string tied. So she pulled up the string. And in the string, there was a rope. So she pulled up the rope. And with the rope, she tied it inside her uh, room. A strong in, in uh, some iron that was there. And now the prince, he climbed up the rope. He threw the princess on his shoulder. He was very strong. And he went down the rope, and to the horse they went, and they set off. As the sun was coming up over the horizon, they were riding away, and after that, living happily ever after. <laughs> yes, this was the story from Mullah Nasruddin in the Chaisha. And Pythagoras was thinking, how can this be? How can I benefit from this story? <laughs> now he said, the Mulana student said, well, you see the silk thread, it's a symbolizing the breath. So when you get hold of the silk thread, when you get hold of the breath, you get hold of the string, and the string symbolizes the mind. So when you get hold of the breath, you relax your mind. And when you relax your mind, your body relaxed, the, you have the rope. When body, mind and breath is relaxed, you can rest in your heart, in your heart love awareness. And there you are, free. And that is your true identity. You're not Pythagoras. you that open heart love awareness in your heart. So he went out into the uh, uh, desert, Pythagoras, and he practiced this now. He practiced this uh, for six weeks, it is said. He practiced. And there is another technique from Shiva, where Shiva says, in worldly activities, put attention on the beginning of breath. That is a, how do you get hold of the breath? Beginning of breath. There's only one, not the turning point, only the one turning when the breath begins, when it goes out and begins, goes in. We put attention on the beginning of breath. So continuing, in a few days be born anew.
So, uh, I don't know if um, there's a little bit uh, small space here, but uh, we can, you, as you sit, you can just try that. Breathe out as you're sitting and put attention on the, when the breath goes in again, beginning of breath. And relax out. And again, there is a beginning. And relax out. Suddenly you start to hear things also. Now you can rest in your hearing. There's another technique from Kiva, when vividly aware through some particular sense, keep in the awareness. That's a very sweet one. When, vi when you're vividly aware th through that bell over there, when you're vividly aware through some particular sense, keep in the awareness. Stay there, aware of that. Now, there's so many, 112 meditation techniques. You can experiment with them and do one here and one there and another one tomorrow. Now, anyway, Pythagoras, he went out into the desert and after six weeks he came back and he knocked on the door of the, of the temple, mysterious school. And they came open and he said, now I understand, I am not, I, I have been meditating and I know that I am not Pythagoras, I'm not, I am not the famous mathematician, but I am here willing to come into your mystery school. And now suddenly they opened the door and he was allowed in. And when he came in, after some time, they taught him one technique there. And the funny thing is that 20, 1971, when I was traveling in north of India, I was studying yoga for a meditation teacher, a yogi there, called Prem Varni. And I said to Prem Varni, that was 40 years ago, I said to him, I want to learn meditation. So, come to me four o'clock tomorrow morning, he said. And uh, it was freezing cold, it was January in Rishikesh. And, <laughs> <laughs> and he had a Baroshi, you know, like a, 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 a burning coal on, you know, and through tulsi leaves on this and some incense, you know, he was sitting there. And then he was teaching me a meditation, which I found out much later was the same that Pythagoras learned in the mystery school in Egypt. And the meditation goes like this. Uh, Shiva says to Devi, uh, attention between the eyebrows. You can say after me, attention Attention between the eyebrows. Between the eyebrows. Put mind before thought. Put mind before thought. Let essence of breath. Let essence of breath. Fill form. Fill form. Fill top of the head. Top of the head. And there shower as light. And there shower as light. Yes. This is like a third eye meditation. So we can try that. We experiment with it with, with uh, uh, for two minutes because to celebrate Prembarni in Rishikesh and Pythagoras in Greece and Shiva as well. And so, uh, attention between the eyebrows. Try that. And if you do that, you will see, uh, try to get the energy together to a, a, a center point in, in the middle of the forehead. Like a, uh, there is a star there. Uh, put attention on the forehead. Let essence of breath, that's like the prana in the breath, the energy in the breath. You breathe in and the essence of the breath is the prana. 
that essence of breath fill form and then you fill it like a bottle from down up till top of the head and there shower as light okay we, we, we I, I let you do it in your own space so relax and enjoy Come back. Uh, what does he? What does Shiva mean? We put mind before thought. He means. Uh, he means to put the mirror before, before what is mirrored. Like the Buddha mind is, is like the mirror, and and the uh, thought is that which is moving. So put mind before thought. That essence of it. Yes. This. These are techniques you must. You will find out soon. I will give you all the techniques in a little book and then you can experiment with them yourself. And uh, maybe it's, uh, we should uh, go on with uh, a very practical meditation called eating meditation. So if someone can help me, if there is some bananas there, can, uh, can you give, uh, we will all have one banana. Now we will do the banana meditation. <laughs> and you, when you get the banana, you are not allowed to eat it at once. We will first, first you can smell on it. Yeah, take one and send them around. Good. For those who want to, to eat bananas with their heads, we will give them a book also. You have? Through the candela. Take one and, and pass it on. These are the 112 centering techniques by Shiva. And uh, I have made a circle around the ones that I like most and that I have experimented with. And you can uh, find your own favorite there or now we will do the one is, which is about eating, and I don't remember the number. Huh? Forty-seven. 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 Yeah. When eating or drinking, yes. Shiva says, 
Because this is called, uh, the, the, this, these meditation techniques is called Tantra, and Tantra is opposite of yoga in a way. Tantra is allowing the senses, you know, like in yoga you pull uh, like a tortoise, you pull your arms in and your head in, and you go into your Advaita cave and you renounce everything of the world, basically, and you, uh, and, and um, that is also a method, a technique. But Tantra is, the, uh, is when you, you try to experiment with the smell and the taste and with the senses, and through the senses, through what you hear and, and see, you become one with everything, you become one with all. So by being open, you can become one by, uh, with all. By being a little ball in a cave, you can <laughs> also become one. But it's a little bit fragile, you know, these yogis in the cave, you know. They're very sensitive for when young ladies come passing by, you know, then they usually crack. Okay. <laughs> so here, here, their peace, as um, their peace of mind is, is to When eating and drinking become the taste of the food or drink and be filled. So please, now we take the banana. Do you have one? I didn't get one. <laughs> My God, it's Durga. Here we have plenty. And you can, but first you can smell it, and and then you can practice the technique when 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 smelling, when vividly aware of some particular sense, then it's the smelling. You smell it, and you feel the banana flower. At least three times you can breathe to greet the banana, and then you you taste it. And when you taste it. You become one with the taste, and, and the taste is the mantra, the meditation, the centering point the, of the mandala. You go through the taste, you become one with the banana and the cosmos. This is a very useful Tantra meditation technique when eating and drinking become the taste of the food. Because every time you smell, some, every time you eat something, every time you drink something, do it uh, with awareness, you know, and it becomes a gate for centering. And you do these meditations, the, many of the Tantra meditations, you do them for short moments, as often as you remember, you don't try to eat the banana for, for three hours, you know? <laughs> you do it when you do it, and then and, and then, then you do something else, and you know, then you switch. So, I mean, you do the meditations for short moments, repeated many times, as often as you remember, you center. And now, I don't know, if you lay down, can you see the blue sky? What is a roof here? Eh? Try to lay down. Yeah. Is it possible? Or you can maybe see that there is a sweet technique, you know, like Shiva says, simply by looking into the blue sky, simply, you can say after me, simply, simply, by looking, by looking into the blue sky, into the blue sky. Beyond clouds. Beyond clouds. The serenity. The serenity. Yes. Feel the, the openness of the sky. The openness of the sky is the same as your openness of your awareness. Your awareness beyond clouds. Beyond thoughts. Endless. 
has no limit. The sky has no limit. N neither has your awareness any limit. Simply by looking into the blue sky, the beyond clouds, the serenity. That great. <laughs> Okay, I think we go on here. We, we, we have uh, time to wake up. And uh, uh, yes, before.
technique for we can collect the peels because that's um, Maya, can you sum up skål and put on the junkhead? Try another exercise <coughs> and uh, another meditation. If you all stand up, and uh, I don't know, um, now we have a little bit chaotic space here, but maybe we can do it anyway. Let's see, I do this. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah, can we, can we make uh, like a circle? Let's try that. Is it possible? An egg. An egg, an egg, yeah. Egg circle. Is it possible? You move a little bit. Yes. One sleeping in the egg. Okay. Okay, you can stand up, and then we, we try to um, uh, stand in this way, so that we can walk around. And then we can try a little bit walking meditation. The uh, medi Vipassana is done, you know, sitting and standing and walking and laying down. So, lift left foot and then carry and put down. And then next foot, lift, carry, foot down. Lift, carry, foot down. Lift, carry, foot down. Then just think it. Stop there, and, and you turn in, and then, uh, <coughs> well, uh, you can say Namaste. Namaste. Yeah, Namaste. As I understand, it is the meaning is the 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 inner guru in me is greeting the inner leader in you. The inner light in me is greeting the inner light in you. So, uh, this is theater, you know. I'm, I'm playing guru, but I'm a, there is no guru here. This has to be. And you are your own guru in your heart. The, your true guru is in your heart. You have to listen to, your, to yourself. And find out. This is... So anyway, I say namaste once more. Namaste. namaste. And then... Uh, can you say after me, uh, yes, 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 and no, no, 
and yes please. Yes please. And goodbye. Goodbye. Ah, these are uh, some strong words now. Now we will try an, um, a very sweet meditation from Shiva, where he says, um, say after me, um, Oh, sweet princess. Oh, sweet princess. Oh, sweet prince. Oh, sweet prince. When being caressed. When being caressed. Enter the caressing. Enter the caressing. As everlasting life. As everlasting life. So it's a hug meditation. So it is a. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so when you, uh, what Shiva says is, when you hug someone, you enter the hugging as everlasting life. You don't think about anything except everlasting life. So this is, you enter the hugging as everlasting life. This is the meaning. So we will do this, and then you go like this, and then you say Namaste. You meet someone. You say, you say after me Namaste. Namaste. And then if the person says yes. You say yes, yes. yes. or no. Oh, no. <laughs> if you say no, you go on to the next person. If he says yes, you can hug the person. And if the person says yes, please, you can hug more. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and then you say good, uh, uh, goodbye, and then you, you walk off to the next person. Okay. So uh, we will try this. You. We will all walk into the room and then we will meet someone, we say namaste and we see what happens, okay? <laughs> One, two, three. Walk in and see if you find someone. <laughs> and boys can hug boys and girls can hug girls. Yes. 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 Yes.
Yeah, yes, we could go on with this forever, huh? Uh, this yeah. is like nice. <laughs> <laughs> but um, now we come into the next scene of the Stockton Theater. And we will have. Um, you can look in the book and see if you find some uh, technique that you have any question about. And we will do some. Uh, uh, you can come forward here and sit in the red chair. And. Uh, and you ask questions, and I will be Guru, and you will be the one of putting questions to the Guru. Huh? We will all play the theatre. There is one, one technique about theatre. Life is a theatre, she safely said, and there is one uh, which is like this. Um, this, you can say after me, this so-called universe this so-called universe appears, appears as a juggling picture show. As a juggling picture show. To be happy. To be happy. And look upon its soul. So, so it's <laughs> like you see the jugglers, you know. Their whole life appears. I mean, how could Shiva write that 5,000 years ago? This so-called universe appears as a juggling picture show. But I mean, I don't know. This so-called universe appears as a juggling picture show. To be happy, look upon its soul. So, uh, that's what Shiva said. And we will see if this microphone business works. David, uh, David asks, yes? would you just like to have one song or something in between? Oh, that could be very nice. Would Good idea. Nice? Yes, could yes. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for, for... Would it be nice? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Let's do that. And then uh, when s we have this technique 48, we can look at. Look at technique 48 in the book. And that says, Oh, lotus eyed one, he speaks to David. She has lo eyes like lotus flowers. Oh, lotus eyed one, sweet of touch. When singing, seeing, tasting, be aware you are and discover the ever-living. Self-remembering, here, self-remembering, you remember yourself and when you're singing and enter the singing.
Is there anyone having a question? We can do that in between. Uh, from, if you read this uh, uh, text, is there any meditation you'd like to have explained or something? There is a small devotee. He can have another banana. Oh, thank you. There are two there. Yes. Minimum. Take two. One. Yep. So, I sit here. And if there's anyone having a question, now is the time. You will... Uh, yes, please. I have a question. Yeah, you have a question. Very good. Mm. We'll see if we get... Aum Trayambakam. And you? You're on? I think so. I don't yeah, know. yeah. Right. You have a question? Yes. Yes. My question is on number uh, 50... Four. Fifty-four, yes. In an easy position, gradually pervade an area between the armpits into a great place. <laughs> Dis discuss. <laughs> Does it say discuss? Or no, that's my question. I would like to discuss. Ah, oh, oh, but that, that uh, which one? Fifty-four. 54. 54. 54. In Sorry, into a great peace, I said place. Yeah, yeah, between the armpits. Into great peace. Ah, mm. uh, I have never tried this. 
<laughs> and there is no circle around it either. <laughs> this, this is said that, that some of these techniques are for uh, for uh, past times, and some are for future times, and some are for now, and some are for you. And you don't need more than a handful of them, or you, only one maybe. If you you can certainly uh, experiment with one for. The, the, the thing with the techniques, it is said that you, you try it for, for three days and if it clicks in you if, you, if you feel that you like it, then you experiment a little bit longer, like three months, and uh, then it becomes a friend of yours and then you can keep it for, for uh, uh, situations that it's use, suitable for. But this one I never tried. This one I never tried, but uh, I, I'm, uh, I, w I will, uh, next year you can come back and report and you have one year to experience with this Find one. out and let me know. Please. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, um, uh, to each one of those, Osho has given talks, you know, he, he has explained more than half an hour to, on each of these uh, sutras. And you can find that uh, whole book of secrets, 1,600 pages or something on my on the free academy website freeacademy.se and there it's like a word document you just click on it zoop it comes on your computer you can save it uh, and uh, have it on your phone telephone or on your notepad or on your computer and you can study and then you can f probably find the osho's explanation to this uh, technique you know on who was practicing it and what was the what were the the experiences of the the some maybe some uh, sect or some guru has tried this one particularly and Osho would tell you about it. So um, you can explore that. Okay, we take another one. Do we have another question? Yeah, I have one. You have one. Yeah. Yes, please. Um, the first question is, are they always in this order, if we were to find them somewhere else? Uh, I don't know about the order. Maybe the order can be different in other... Uh, uh, this, this is the order that Paul Reps wrote down. Uh, uh, Paul Reps was a, um, a scholar. Uh, 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 he traveled in Kashmir. And this, uh, the Shiva Sutras, the uh, Shaivism, has been kept in Kashmir am among the, the the sadhus and the people there. And it is uh, also said that Buddhism doesn't like priests, you know. Buddha says, be a light unto yourself. Apudipubhav was the last words of Buddha. When Ananda said, who, who will lead us now? Buddha answered on the last breaths. He said, be a light unto yourself. Apudipubhav. So you have to be your own guru, you have to be a light unto yourself. And therefore Buddhism doesn't need Brahmins and rituals and, and so it was kicked out of India and uh, up to Tibet and Burma and Thailand and uh, Afghanistan and, and there were very less Buddhists in, in India. And when I visited Budgaya 1968, where the holy tree is, it was a totally forgotten place. There was no pilgrims there. There was a, just a big tree and a very small, like ten monks living there by the side in a very muddy hut. And there was just a dirt road around. And um, so Buddhism is gaining interest. Buddhism has a, an appeal to the modern mind because it is scientific and you experiment and you try the meditations and, and you don't have to believe in anything. So therefore now there's a lot of temples and, and uh, each Buddhist nation has their own big temple and hotel there in Budgaya, like Japan, Thailand, and Burma and, and uh, so there's a, and the Tibetans have their center there. So, anyway, uh, where were um, we? One more question. Mm. On the walking meditation, uh, or moving in general meditation, I find that uh, 
slower brings more thoughts and faster less thoughts oh oh yes okay yeah oh yeah i think you have to find uh, the speed you like you know i mean uh, uh, if you like to run fast uh, or if you like to run uh, you find your your own individual where the meditation happens for you it happens at, at a certain speed you know also walking you walk and then you get into a flow you know that that now this is the uh, this is me you know walking and you have your own speed you know? mm -hmm. and, and, and you just experiment and find your own speed yeah and, and the one you like <laughs> automatically you find it Okay, yes. anyone else? Yes. Yes? But I, I, it's also like uh, when you're doing the dishes, for example, and then you can experiment. Now you do it in slow motion, you know? As, as an experiment. And that could be also nice. You know? And then, then you focus, you know? And then you can experiment with speed. Hmm? Yes, please. Yes. I don't have questions. You don't have questions? But I have answers. Okay. Uh, if we have this uh, armpits uh -huh. uh, thing. 54. Uh, the, uh, 54. Mm -hmm. And there is one before. That is 53. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, it says, uh, this without support uh, for feet and hands, sit only on butter. So uh, when you sit, you sit. Mm -hmm. Like we all do, we sit on our very ass. Mm -hmm. This you can feel. This is existential. Mm -hmm. This is here now. And this, through feeling, we internalize it. This is this is really being where you are. This is the start of the meditation. This is the opening from the from the lower chakra. This is being existential. And then comes the next one, 54. Uh, in this position, grade, gradually pervade the area between the armpits and the great feet. The area between the armpits is so over here, it's the heart. So you bring the energy up into the heart. This happens automatically ah. by being, by sitting, and by just feeling yourself sitting there. And it helps when you close your eyes uh, because then uh, it is more easy to, to get in there. And then when you breathe in, you, your breath goes there, etc, etc. These are very, very easy to follow hints to, uh, to center yourself uh, where you belong, which is in your center. Right, right. That's yes, it. Yes. So there is not much to it. Mm -hmm. But still, you need to be in there and you need mm -hmm. to find it, which is not Yes. Suddenly, the centering. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. I think the integrate piece. It says also. And each of these techniques has like an, an end verse, you know, like the centering or integrate piece. Enter such clarity. Uh, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So just experiment and then uh, and see what happens. And, and when we, I don't remember when you went to school, you know, we, we, I remember when I went to school, we had the experiments. We had to like boil water and have a thermometer there and then see at what temperature is the bo water boiling actually, you know. Is it boiling at 95? No. 96? 97? No. It's actually boiling on 100 degrees, you know. And then we had to freeze it down and see what happens at, when it comes near zero. At zero, it turns into ice, you know? And so we experiment like this and find out if it's true or not. Now, with the same with these techniques, you experiment with them and see if you benefit from them. You play with them in a, you know, like a couple of days and, and don't be, don't be serious. Uh, Serious, but but be sincere. Osho says, try it, you know, and and but be playful with them, <coughs> and then then the transformation is possible. Now we will see. Does it work, this machine? Yeah, if you put the, the machine on, yeah, the cable is there, yeah, yeah, and it's on. There is a possibility for a dance meditation too. Can we take this way, maybe? 
Here she has a little bit of space. Ray is going to do, and uh, as well as singing can become a meditation, when listening to stringed instrument, it is said. When listening to stringed instrument, put attention on the central core, thus omnipresent, Shiva says. In, in such a way, be all over the place, omnipresent. When you listen to the, the classical music and then you, you're going to the, the horizon in the music, and then you're like everywhere, you go into meditation. Now, she's going to show some dance, and in dance, you can also enter meditation. I mean, if you go to a party and you dance, and then you notice by yourself that you get out of your head, and you get into the dance, you know, and then suddenly the dance disappears, and the head also. Sunset. <laughs> this is, this is jo pure joy, you know. So, now we will see some dance meditation. Right now. But there is some technique problem here. No problem. No problem? Coming? Thank you. 
No. 
what I heard when I was sitting on the floor in his library in 1972-73. Those were the talks he gave. So, and I listened to them for 40 years and uh, I'm still listening to them. <laughs> They're very sweet. So, uh, please have one coffee for yourself as you end at work. And now we can take one more song, eh? Is that true? Okay. That is. So now. Just enjoy the singing. And the book you can keep, and uh, on the back side you find information how you reach the academy.
Thank you everybody for coming. Thank you. And don't miss uh, the sunset singing on the beach. Have it every evening. Every evening. Carpe diem. Carpe diem. You're just moving right down there and continue, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. More or less. Ready to go. For those who want to do Kundalini meditation, uh, Siddhartha is doing that 5.30 on his uh, eagle nest down there, on the cliffside. There's Kundalini meditation at Siddhartha's place. Straight away, eh? Huh? To be there in time, you have to move Yeah, you have, those, those who want to be in that should go straight away. Are you? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Ah, tack ska du ha. Okay.